Hello, welcome to Jim RPG Show. So today we're going to be looking at some TSMC news. They're the manufacturers of the CPUs and GPUs for AMD and Nvidia. Now it looks as though there might be some news of Nvidia going back to TSMC. So that could very well mean that there's going to be some 30 series supercards. At least that's my speculation anyway. Now we've also got news of TSMC increasing their production capacity for 7 nanometer, and that could very well mean AMD will be getting more CPUs and GPUs and we'll look at how many more that they might be getting as a result of this. And finally we'll also look at production capacity for consoles, so that's the PS5 and Xbox Series X which, which is also manufactured under TSMC. Now if you like this video make sure to click the like button and also to click on the subscribe button for more gaming videos like this. So this news comes courtesy of Retired Engineer. He likes to translate a lot of the news from DigiTimes which reports on a lot of the technology news from China and Taiwan. Number 2, TSMC has adjusted production capacity for 7 nanometer and 5 nanometer upwards to meet the strong demand from customers. 7 nanometer production capacity has reached 130,000 wafers per month ahead of plans and will be further increased to 140,000 wafers per month by the end of the year. 5 nanometer production capacity is also gradually being increased from 50,000 wafers per month in quarter 2 to 105,000 wafers per month, up from the original target of 80 to 90,000 wafers per month in the first half of 2021. So right now TSMC has 7 nanometer and 5 nanometer. Now 5 nanometer, a lot of those products are to do with mobile phones and tablets. Uh, basically a Apple right now is on 5 nanometer and I would assume the other mobile companies are also on 5 nanometer as well. There's a lot of profit margin in those mobile phones and tablets so they're probably on that superior node to begin with. And with 7 nanometer, uh, AMD is on 7 nanometer for both the CPUs and GPUs so we can assume that they're going to be getting a lot of extra production capacity as well with this news. Now we don't know how much of this 10,000 wafers per month that the AMD is going to be getting but we can assume that they're going to be getting quite a bit of it because they're a big customer of TSMC. So the question is, is AMD going to be making more CPUs or GPUs? Now the thing is CPUs make a lot more money due to the smaller die space and you get to charge almost as much as that big Navi uh, that you can charge with that big GPU. So the thing is with the CPU the die space is about 70 millimeters per chiplet so with the 5950X you'll get two of those so that would be about 150 millimeters squared. Now going by this die calculator if we use a 300 millimeter wafer diameter and we use 75 millimeter chiplets so it looks like we get about 730 of those good dies on a single wafer and if you have a 5900X or a 5950X that would use two of those chiplets in the one CPU and that would mean that you'd have about 360 good CPUs on a single 300mm wafer. Now if you do a bit of quick maths that's 360 CPUs times 10,000 extra wafers that's 3.6 million CPUs and now AMD isn't going to use all of that wafer capacity just on CPUs alone but that's the maximum amount that they could make. Now with GPUs it's a different story because the die size is much bigger so your die size is about 600 mil. Now we don't know if it's going to be 600, I'm just having a guess here, it could be 500 but for argument's sake let's say it's around 500, 600. Uh, but as you can see here with the 300 millimeter wafer diameter you only get 45 good dies. So it's very likely that um, AMD has no incentive to make more GPUs. Especially when you consider that you can charge $600 for a uh, 5900X or $800 for a 5950X and with a big Navi you only charge maybe $700 because that's what Nvidia is charging for their 3080. So we could very well see enough supply for the CPUs and possibly again not enough supply for the GPUs. So if we do some quick maths, if we do 45 extra GPUs times 10,000 wafers per month, that's 450,000 GPUs that we could get. So does AMD make 3.6 million CPUs or 450,000 GPUs? If they're roughly the same price then you would expect that AMD would make more CPUs than GPUs. 
That said, what they're going to do is balance the demand and supply for the CPUs and GPUs because that way they don't have any extra stock that is sitting on shelves and warehouses and they're going to sell out everything. Number four, supply still can't meet demand for TSMC 7 to 5 nanometer. From order visibility, TSMC is fully booked all the way till mid 2021. Besides Apple, AMD's orders for CPUs and GPUs have also been rising steadily due to increasing market share. Same for some Chinese companies. So I think this is really interesting news. As you recall, Nvidia went with Samsung for their 30 series cars because they were trying to negotiate with TSMC uh, to lower their prices for their GPUs. And TSMC knew that they had the production capacity, so they didn't lower their prices. And it looks like uh, that was true in the end. Uh, TSMC is fully booked out even without Nvidia, which is a really large customer for TSMC. And TSMC were right because other companies came in and filled up that production capacity. Now number five says, unable to secure more production capacity, Sony's soon to be launched PS5 may see high volume production only in first half of 2021. And I've got another article here from Screen Rants. Sony has not adjusted PS5 production despite pre-order craze. And that's likely due to the fact that TSMC is fully booked out everywhere and you really can't get any more production. Now it says here, now GameIndustry.biz reports that the company is promising to make more units available for retailers and that it has not changed the production number for PlayStation 5 since the start of mass production. PlayStation CEO Jim Ryan has also gone on record saying that the PS5 will have more available stock at launch than the PS4, yet it looks like demand for the PS5 will also exceed that of the PS4. Now just how many PS5s are we talking about? So. A few weeks ago, uh, this is also from Retired Engineer, and this is also from DigiTimes, but it says here that Sony and Microsoft's next-gen consoles are expected to be in short supply until mid-2021. Orders for custom processors designed by AMD are expected to be hot. For the second half of this year, orders for TSMC 7 nanometer console-related processors have reached 102,000 wafers. Near-term yield rate is estimated to be around 58% with significant improvements expected after quarter four. So how many would 100,000 wafers be? So we go to this die per wafer calculator again, and if we put in, for example, a 300 millimeter die size for the PS5. So using that calculator, it looks like it produces about 130 of those 300 millimeter dies. And if we do 130 times 100,000, that gives us about 13 million PS5 dies. And obviously Xbox Series X is a little bit larger, but let's just go with the 13 million number. And if we look at the fab yield, it says 74%. And in the news from DigiTimes, it said that it had a 58% yield rate. So give or take about 15 to 16%. So let's assume for argument's sake, we get about 10 million dies altogether. So I'm assuming we probably get about 7 million PS5 dies and probably about 3 million Xbox Series X or Series S dies. And considering the consoles are launching in November and December, that's 7 million units in two months time. And I think that's a lot of units. Now, finally, we get to Nvidia and what could possibly be the 30 series supercards. This is number six, Nvidia's RTX 30 series currently uses Samsung's eight nanometer process. But in 2021, Nvidia may switch to TSMC's seven nanometer. Volume is expected to be high. Reasons being TSMC's seven nanometer quotes have become more friendly and to diversify risk due to Samsung's yield problems for eight nanometer. Nvidia is expected to be one of the key customers contributing to TSMC's continued high utilization rate for seven nanometer in 2021. So it looks like there might be a little bit of contradictory information there because it says TSMC's quotes have become a little bit more friendly. But I think that if TSMC is fully booked out, then uh, the price is more or less going to be what TSMC uh, says they're going to be. So uh, Nvidia is probably looking to get back into the good graces of TSMC and uh, they can't really afford to stay too long on that inferior Samsung node. So they're probably going to look to get back to TSMC because the TSMC manufacturing is just better. 
and uh, it produces a more efficient card and you're gonna get more performance out of it. And with AMD chasing NVIDIA uh, right now with their big Navi uh, looking to be very close in performance to the 3080 and better in efficiency, that definitely prompts NVIDIA to go back to uh, TSMC. Now in terms of my speculation for the supercars, that's because if you look at when the 20 series supercars came out, they were around nine months after the regular cars came out. So if you look at the GeForce 2070, it came out on October the 17th, and the GeForce 2080, which was September the 20th, uh, the supercars came out July 9th, 2019. So that's around nine months time. So we could be on a very similar schedule for the 30 series supercars, and that could mean July of next year, we could be getting the supercars. So if you look at the 2060, that was launched on January the 15th and the supercard came out July 9th. So about seven months after the regular card, the supercard of the 2060 came out. That's it for this one. Make sure to click on the like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more gaming videos and I'll see you in the next one.